Assalamu alaikum and uh, welcome to the Dr. UUT channel. Uh, let's proceed the lecture in English. Myasthenia gravis. It is a Latin term or a terminology which means as a whole that uh, it is abnormal muscle weakness. Abnormal muscle weakness. So what are the targets of this disease? Then we will move over that how this happens pathophysiologically. There are general targets. Eyelid, extraocular muscle of the eye, you know, ocular eye, and uh, lungs, smooth muscle, and the very prominent skeletal muscle. So then, if these muscles become weak what will happen eyelid drooping a person will feel difficult to uplift or to lift up the eyelids extraocular muscles when we become weak then a person is not able to concentrate at a specific point at a specific object for a longer period so if the person starts concentrating then the person will feel somehow weakness and this weakness will result into the movement of the eyes to the sides so this eye will move to the periphery why because these muscles extraocular muscles are holding the eye and helping you to focus at a specific point and lungs you can you will feel difficulty in breathing and might lead to death so then now how this happens this is actually a two immune disease you know the acetylcholine when it is released from the nerve and now we're talking about the neurons or the nerves supplying to the skeletal muscles or to the voluntary muscles and this is the example of the neurons that are supplied to the skeletal muscles this acetylcholine when released from the presynaptic neuron and will join to the muscle at the neuromuscular junction neuromuscular junction this is here so when this acetylcholine binds to the receptor present at the muscle what are their names nicotinic receptors we have nicotinic receptors of two types nicotinic neuronal and nicotinic muscle type so we're talking about this one when nicotinic muscle type receptors uh, are uh, activated by this acetylcholine when this binds this neurotransmitter binds to the receptor this receptors become activate now the activation of this receptor leads to the muscle contraction this is responsible to do the contraction of muscles. Now, a moment earlier, I mentioned that myasthenia gravis is autoimmune disease. In this, your immune system becomes crazy. B cells responsible to release antibodies. These antibodies will come and will cover the receptor. Autoimmune, your own system, your own immune system becomes crazy. And uh, will cover the receptor which is the receptor, nicotinic receptor for this acetylcholine. Now acetylcholine is come available here but not able to bind to the receptor. Why? Because it has been covered by antibodies. Due to which what happens? The signal is not given for the contraction and a muscle will, feel, will not feel uh, the signal if not feels the signal. So then the muscle becomes unable to do the contraction due to which we feel a myasthenia gravis or muscle weakness that's it and uh, now how we diagnose that uh, whether the person is myasthenic patient or not we have test tensilon test hydrophonium test what do we do in case of uh, hydrophonium if this injection is given and this injection is supposed to target the enzyme acetylcholine esterase enzyme which is responsible to break this acetylcholine you know when acetylcholine is available but uh, here antibodies are available also to cover the, uh, the receptor now this uh, acetylcholine then will be broken down by the acetylcholine esterase its function is to break the acetylcholine so now again what will happen once this one uh, one problem is that uh, the receptor is covered other is that here the concentration is not left enough of the acetylcholine to find another receptor to do its job that is means to activate the receptor so in case of hydrophonium what happens when this is given in the injectable or when the hydrophonium is injected that hydrophonium will inhibit this enzyme when this enzyme is inhibited then what will happen 
Inhibition of acetylcholine esterase enzyme will lead to the accumulation of acetylcholine. Now acetylcholine is not broken because acetylcholine esterase is inhibited. When the concentration of the acetylcholine increases, then it will find the receptor on the muscle to activate the muscle. Then the muscle contraction will happen. So this is the criteria and the way to diagnose. If the person says, a patient says that I am not feeling well or I am having the muscle weakness and if we want to diagnose that whether the person is having a muscle weakness or not, we will give the adrophonium. Its action is for five to for uh, 10 to 30 minutes in that then again its action is lost. So if in, though in that amount of time, if the person feels that uh, he gains or she gains more of muscle uh, contraction or uh, is recovered you can say then a person says that I don't feel now weakness when this is injected but after 30 minutes or 25 minutes or 20 minutes again the person uh, is complaining that I feel again the muscle weakness so this means that this person is the patient of myasthenia gravis so then how will we treat the myasthenia gravis patients very obvious and very easy is it is autoimmune disease first thing is that you are supposed to inhibit the immune system not the complete immune system here you have triggered the cells not to release antibodies so you will give uh, auto the immunosuppressant noun is uh, prednisone and another thing in the treatment strategy is you will target the acetylcholine esterase. You will give somehow acetylcholine esterase inhibitor drugs. This is the second step of the treatment. What are the acetylcholine esterase inhibitors? Physostigmine and neostigmine. Immunosuppressant will suppress the beta cells to release antibodies. Then there will be no release of antibodies. If um, antibodies are not released, so then receptors available here will be free and then the acetylcholine will be able to bind the receptor and the muscles contraction will happen. So the receptor will activate and the activation of receptor will lead to the muscle contraction. And again, what will this uh, do in the treatment strategy? Physostigmine, neostigmine, what will they do? Their function is to inhibit the acetylcholine esterase. So if this is inhibited, then acetylcholine will not be broken and here the amount or the concentration will increase. And again, when there is enough amount of uh, or concentration of the acetylcholine present, so they will then bind to the receptor, receptor will activate and muscle contraction will happen. So like this, you can overcome the mycena gravis. And uh, the third, that is uh, a very interesting treatment, that is the removal of the thymus gland. Thymus gland is removed. And its explanation is not that much available or discussed in the books, but uh, somehow, it is, uh, you can say, I um, think that thymus gland if it is removed, so you know thymus gland is responsible to release helper T cells and their function is to uh, activate the beta cells and these beta cells will then release the antibodies. So if thymus gland is not available, helper T cells are not available and beta cells are not stimulated, so antibodies are not available then and if antibody is not available then it is not covered and what will happen the acetylcholine will bind to the receptor available here and will the activate the receptor so after when the muscle the receptor is activated its function is to do the contraction of the muscle so like this you can overcome the myasthenia gravis or the muscle weakness or the abnormal muscle weakness by the treatment strategy immunosuppressants acetylcholine esterase inhibitors thymus gland removal so this is the treatment and diagnosis by hydrophonium tensilon test and the target organs are the eyelid, extraocular muscles and lungs and skeletal muscles and myasthenia gravis itself is a muscle weakness, an abnormal muscle weakness.